we are going to discuss how to overcome a fat loss plateau. If you are on your fitness journey, then you will likely stumble upon a plateau somewhere, okay? And it's really important to take the necessary steps in order to get the fat loss process going because if you don't take the necessary steps, you can actually go backwards. What I recommend is making sure you're actually in a plateau. So take about two to three weeks if you're really not seeing changes in your body and your progress, okay? Sometimes people's changes happen slower, sometimes they happen faster. Now that you have determined you are indeed in a plateau, there are three ways to overcome it. Now, this all has to do with still staying in a caloric deficit, which basically means that you need to be eating less calories than you are burning or expending. The first way we do this is by decreasing your food intake. The second way is by increasing your activity. The third way is usually with a mix of both. Now this all has to do with preference, okay? So maybe maybe you're still eating a lot and you don't mind eating, you know, maybe 200 calories less or you can increase your activity and keep the calories the same. It is all based on your lifestyle. If you are a busy professional, if you have a hectic job or you're very busy, maybe just decreasing your food intake would be ideal for you because then you don't have to spend as much time, you know, doing everything like going on walks. You don't have to spend time doing cardio at the gym. You don't have to spend as much time expending energy. This also demonstrates the importance of having a coach or somebody who can objectively look at your body to see what you need and make the necessary adjustments to your program as your body changes so that you never ever hit a plateau and you are always progressing in the right direction. Let's say you are somebody eating 18 50 calories and doing 20 minutes of cardio. If you wanted to put yourself in a greater caloric deficit than this for fat loss, you could be eating 1700 calories, but you could also just be doing 10 to 15 minutes of cardio or adding more steps in. So what we did here was we decreased the amount of calories you're eating, right? 150 calories less, but now we kind of decrease the cardio as well because we decreased the amount of calories. Or you can add in more steps. Steps are really, really beneficial because they are just something you can do that doesn't require as much brain work as much energy throughout the day. This is actually a part of non-exercise activity thermogenesis known as NEAT and it is just the unintentional movements you do throughout the day like fidgeting, running errands, gardening, maybe you are a farmer so your, um, your job is very labor intensive, just stuff like that that really add up to your overall daily energy expenditure. Sometimes when you think you're increasing your cardio, you're increasing your activity at the gym, you may not actually be losing more calories because throughout the day you may be more tired. Maybe you don't move around as much. Maybe you tell your significant other to grab you a drink from the fridge and because you don't want to go walk through yourself because you're tired because you just did a lot of um, higher intensity cardio. That's why I really emphasize the, um, the importance of having a step count as well as, you know, keeping up with your activity. You have to make sure that if you are adding cardio, you are still staying somewhat active throughout the day 
to really get into that caloric deficit. This is actually also why it's important to not start your caloric deficit or your fat loss phase in too low calories or too high activity level. Because if you're starting your fat loss phase at 1200 calories, you have nowhere to go besides down, right? And if you're already doing like an hour of cardio, then you just you just have to keep increasing, you know, that cardio or you have to keep increasing your steps or increasing that um, energy expenditure altogether. So if you have a mix of the bad, right, the mix of the two, then you're screwed. Oh. So you want to make sure your metabolism is at a healthy state before entering a fat loss phase in general. That's it, you guys. I hope you learned something new. If you found this helpful, or if you're going to try any of these tips out, please leave it in the comments below which tip you are going to try out for yourself. And maybe I can even help you out a little bit. And shoot me a thumbs up if you like the video. And until next time, see ya.